Hi, everybody. I have to say that I am really getting tired of reading comments from people who say there's nothing we can do, there's nothing we can do, there's nothing we can do. All right. Um, there are plenty of things that we can do. And those who want to believe there's nothing we can do, well, I, I don't know what how it is you've come to that conclusion perhaps it's because you don't want to do anything but here is an example of what can be done when people band together and support one another stop and shop which is a very successful grocery store in Connecticut Rhode Island Massachusetts at 1 p.m. On April 11, 31,000 workers at 253 stop and shop grocery stores walked off the job and they were striking for 11 days. No union members crossed the picket line. Most stores were open and supervisors and a small number of replacement workers have been stocking shelves and working cash registers, but they took a big financial hit. Like here, the store was open for 16 hours in Fairfield, Connecticut, and they took in only 2,000. Wow, that's a big hit. So they had political, uh, their representatives supporting them. Oh yes, and Joe Biden and Elizabeth Warren shows up. They do the photo op and there are pictures here of oh, Joe Biden, man. Um, anybody who could believe that these people believe in just ordinary Americans is really just, I, I, it's incomprehensible at this point. But there they are. Yes, the Democrats. Elizabeth Warren, too, she shows up and, ah, we support you. We're on the good team. I am so unbelievably tired of living this uh, nightmare. So, um, their morale was up. The, the community members had established a food bank where strikers could get free food. Uh, shoppers joined them on the picket line and community members brought them coffee and donuts and pizza and other food and beverages. See, when we band together, we can get things done. So the vast majority of the chain's workers are confronting the unbridled greed of their employers. When I was living in Great Barrington, Massachusetts, I went to Price Chopper, a grocery store, and I knew some of the employees. I would talk to them when I was there. They would tell me how they were treated by their employer, by their supervisors, how they didn't even know what their schedule would be week um, the, the, they learned their schedule at the start of a new week for that week and then they would learn their schedule for the next week at the start of the beginning of that week. How do you plan anything when you don't even know what your schedule is going to be? If somebody took off work either they were sick or something happened to their child, they would get punished. Their hours would be reduced the following week. They were paid shit and treated like crap. Um, many were kept at part-time so they didn't have any benefits. And I said, why are you allowing yourselves to be treated this way? Organize. Walk off the job. Oh, no, no, I can't do that. 
I'll lose my job. The fear in Americans is really, that fear is allowing them to get destroyed. That fear allows them to be treated with no respect. And that unbridled greed, wow, it's out there all over the place. So could you imagine, let's say, um, people banded together and supported people who were uh, renting apartments in apartments that their rent was way too high, no longer reasonable rents. What if everybody just supported those renters? They stop paying the rent until landlords uh, get their greed in control so that homeless people could actually have a place to live. I mean, there is so much that we could do, but um, when we can't band together, and we do have an awful lot of people who have that psyche, there's nothing that we can do, and therefore, well, what, what's that psyche about, though? Well, it allows people to do nothing. And doing nothing is really, you know, it's hard to get active. It's hard to get out there. Um, you know, and uh, yeah, I am also tired of seeing people write, you know, you never talk about solutions and you, you know, what are we supposed to do? All right. First of all, you're an adult. Think about things that you can do in your community. Um, you know, I, I've, I have spoken on this often. I have given lists of things that people can do. You get involved in your community. You go to the town council meetings. You find out what your town council members are up to. Um, you find out what your sta state legislatures, the bills that they have, getting ready to pass, you talk to other people in your community, you organize, you, um, you become involved. You know, we have seen, we have seen people accomplish things when they get involved. When we don't get involved, then, well, it's exactly why we're living what we're living. All right, so how did this come about? This Stop and Shop, I didn't realize, was owned by a Dutch corporation. And I used to shop at Stop and Shop when I lived in Northampton, Massachusetts. Um, so they were going to retract um, or cut, have major cuts in their pensions dramatic increases in the amount workers would have to pay for health care, four times what they pay now. They were looking at four times that for their co-pays. Sunday, no longer would they be paid time and a half. So they went on strike, 31,000. Everybody involved, community members, even media was writing articles that were mostly positive. See, when you get that kind of reaction, when people are supporting, supporting those in their community, supporting a, a strike that is, you know, saying, we're no longer going to be treated like crap. We will not um, permit your greed to destroy us. So everybody was doing the right thing. And what happened? This was written eight days into the strike. On the 11th day, the strike ends. And guess what? Victory. Agreements include increased pay for all associates, continued health coverage, as it was or is, um, the pension benefits will remain as no cuts. Powerful victory. 
The union spokesperson said, we are incredibly grateful to all, all our customers and everyone who proudly stood together with us every day for a contract that invests in the community we serve. So yeah, wage increases, time and a half on Sundays remains the same. They got what they wanted. They took action. So we are treated like animals. Amazon corporations treating their employees like animals. Well, that can only happen when those employees allow themselves to be treated like animals. And unfortunately, we do have a lot of people who really are so fear-based that they allow themselves to be treated with such uh, profound disrespect. And it's not just corporate jobs. It's all over the place. I had a friend who's a teacher. She was telling me how her principal treats her. I cannot, I, I find it really... Um, astounding that people allow themselves to be treated as they are being treated. Well, when you do allow yourself to be treated like an animal, um, with no disrespect, with no respect, I mean, then that permits people who are psychopathic or have psychopathic tendencies to just, they, we unleash this kind of behavior towards us when we don't do anything. So yeah, people need to organize and people need to stand together. You know, it's not just the Amazon worker. It's not just the stop and shop worker. It's the communities, you know, have to stand firm with those who are fighting for what they deserve, what they deserve. And when you don't, when you don't fight for what you deserve, or when you do and nobody's standing with you, supporting you, what happens? You lose and your community really begins to deteriorate and it just becomes this um, kind of moral disgrace. And the morale in that community, well, pretty stinky. Anyway, I'll link below to the articles. And yeah, you know, look, the American psyche has been, there's nothing we can do. Well, that has gotten us here. So maybe we can think about things to do to prevent further Further destruction? Ciao, guys.